My name is Melanie Etamad. I'm from Bryn Mawr. I've lived in Bryn Mawr for 30 years. Um, I'm very disturbed by what I saw. For a very long time, I've heard about racial profiling, and now I have a reflex. Whenever I'm in the township and I see a car that's been pulled over, I always look to see if the driver is black. And I'm very, very, very sad to say to our police officers and department that in 99% of the cases, I'm always right because I suspected someone black and I'm very disturbed when I'm found to be correct. I'm just a mother. I'm just a homeschool mom. I don't work professionally in Lower Marion, but I'm around. I'm concerned about the fact that we are a 97% white community. When I wanted to raise my daughter with diversity, I deliberately would go to the Ardmore Public Library, sad to only see not the kind of diversity that I hope to see. So I spent much more time with programs in the city so that my daughter could be around diverse people. It completely and utterly destroys me to think that in this day, after what we have seen on the national news and what everyone has experienced, I am standing here, I feel like I have no choice. As a white woman, blonde hair, look the mainline part, to not come up and say, this is, there are no words. This is beyond, totally beyond unacceptable that this officer, I don't even necessarily want to say the officer because it's a whole context. It's a whole atmosphere. It's a whole everything. It's not just the police department. It's everybody in this township is responsible for, in, and our country, for this behavior. This, this is a spiritual, moral crisis. The health of our community, the health, my feel. I wanted to just raise my daughter in a healthy way in a healthy way. And, you know, so many people suffer from high blood pressure, but chronic illness, so many things. That is not just because of little, you know, I don't know, you don't eat the right food. So much of this thing is because it's trauma. It is, we need better relationships. We need to treat each other in a better a way. We need to afford every citizen with a kind of dignity and respect. I'm sorry, but when that woman said, listen, let me just say, for years, I had people in my life who said to me, Melanie, if you ever get pulled by a police officer and you're on a dark road and you are by yourself, do not pull your car over. Somebody could be impersonating an officer. You don't know. You should go to a public place and then you pull over. And I'm white. I have never been treated like this. I can only imagine. Can you imagine if you're black? I mean, how many of you are black right now? So I'm speaking. I'm speaking to the majority. I'm not trying to be rude and disrespectful. Truly, I'm trying to be respectful. If you have never had that experience, I mean, generation. This is not just, oh, it happened to my mother. This is so long in our, in our culture, and it's in the water, it's in the food, it's everywhere. I'm, you know, this is, I didn't even come to talk about this tonight. I came about something else, and when I walked in the door, I saw this horrible thing on the screen. And I said, okay, I have to see, you know, I have to talk if I'm, if I let other people, but as a white person, I have no choice. We are sacrificing, we are sacrificing everything by not dealing with this seriously. We are all connected. We, anything that affects any black person in this room affects every single white person in this room. They are not as, the black community is not separate from us. We are all together. I just don't even know what language to use to say that this absolutely cannot, this cannot go like this. This is not standard, ordinary business practice. I know somebody talks about policy, this and this. We have to have a completely different paradigm to address this issue. This is, can 
cannot be standard way of yeah, doing business. If you could wrap it up, please. I'm sorry. Thank you.